the next keynote speaker from Dawao Shao. Please allow us to take this opportunity to introduce him first. Dawao discovered a passion for education during his time as a master's student in computer science at Georgia Tech, when free online courses from top university started popping up. Dawa built a one-page site to keep track of these courses. That site, Class Central, is now the leading destination for finding MOOC as well as understanding what is happening in the world of MOOC. Since 2011, more than 40 million le learners have used Class Central to decide which online course to take. Um, Dawa himself is a MOOC lover. You know, he completed <laughs> so many more courses uh, in his life and he has written over um, in his profile he said 20 but according to my own research many more than 20 is maybe 30 maybe 40 articles on MOOCs that read by millions of people every year uh, his articles are top of the shelf you must read his writing it is just a lot of insight information on MOOCs development over the world including Thai MOOC Jawa is columnist for Search, and he has written for publication including TechCrunch, VentureBeat, Quartz, and um, Observer. Well, Jawa's favorite course of all times are Barbara Oakley's Learning How to Learn and the Stanford Algorithm Designs and Analysis. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to our our time favorite keynote speaker, Dawa Shao. Okay, uh, co-host, could you please unmute his mic, please? Uh, Hello. Minute. Okay, now we can hear you. So can please. you hear me? Yes, Dawa, yeah. please. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, Jerry's talk made me really hungry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have written actually 200. So maybe there's a typo. Yeah, more than 200 articles. So, um, yeah, I can get started maybe? Yes, please. Thank you. And you can see my screen? Yes, I can see your slide well. Yep. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Dawal. I'm the founder of Class Central. And I'm, uh, I think this is my fourth time speaking at ICE, I think two times in person and last year also virtual. And so this is the first uh, fourth time and I'm always happy to be back here. And today sort of I'll uh, describe like an experiment we are running at Class Central uh, with study groups uh, where we are creating a social community layer around already existing courses that anybody can sign up for free. And we started just early this year, sometimes in May, a, May, but this experiment has been sort of boiling for a while since last year. So I'll share our journey and very initial thoughts on what we have learned so far. A quick recap, uh, Class Central is a search engine and our review site for online courses. So we aggregate, until last year, we focused mostly on MOOCs. But now we have expanded to all kinds of online learning. We have courses from uh, 50 different providers. We are also now curating uh, courses on YouTube playlist onto Class Central. So now the catalog has grown 50,000 courses. And since beginning, uh, since 2011, we have helped 50 million people find their next course. And I started taking, you know, the study groups were sort of a, the inspiration behind study groups were the early MOOCs. Uh, I started taking MOOCs right at the beginning, the first ever MOOC, one of the first ever MOOCs from artificial intelligence, uh, from, sorry, Stanford artificial intelligence class. And uh, the other one was design and analysis for algorithms. So I, you know, I was able to earn certificates and each of these courses had hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of learners and and you know, this was for many people, including me, one of the best learning experiences ever. And our study groups are a sort of an attempt to recreate to some parts of it. Uh, and while doing these courses back in 2012, like I, was, I got excited and you know, I just built a one page site saying like, hey, here are all the courses you know, that 
Stanford has been offering. At that time, you know, they, they weren't even called MOOCs or massive open online courses. They were just Stanford free courses. And, you know, it just, just I happened to be at the right place, right time. And that's sort of the, you know, short origin story of Class Central. But, but now let me talk about sort of the experience in 2012 was, and sort of that will set the stage for our study group exper experiment. So back then everything was free, free certificate, you know, any video quizzes, uh, all of, like, the, you know, there wasn't even an option to pay. Even if you wanted to pay, you couldn't. Uh, and now there are paywalls, certificate is not free. Many platforms have timed paywalls. So you have to, uh, you know, you get free for six weeks and then it's paid and quizzes and other things were, uh, are also behind the paywall. And what was interesting is like these courses were real university courses. So they were basically eight to 10 week longs. They had hard deadlines. And this chart I'm sharing it, you know, this was shared by Daphne Kohler in a TED talk. Daphne Kohler is one of the co-founders of Coursera. And she did in a TED talk back in 2012. And as you can see, like the spikes you see are the, the weekends and that's when the deadlines were. And every time there was a deadline, more people signed up and trying to you know, do the assignments and submit. And because there were so many learners, you and global learners around the world, you felt like a part of a community. You go to a forum and you have a question. Generally, because of the cohort nature of it, the top question will probably the same, be the question that you also have. And somebody had already answered it. Back then, Coursera used to brag that the their average response time on a forum question was 22 minutes. So basically you have near real time support anywhere you are in the world. So I think that was one of the most amazing aspect of a MOOC. Uh, and the other interesting thing was the instructors were actually recording in real time. So if you are doing week one, they are preparing videos for week two or week three. So your feedback actually made it into the videos. Nowadays it's flipped, like generally the videos and everything, you know, there's a lot more professionalism, a lot more uh, people have learned a lot how to create courses, but there's some, the personal nature of that sort of is, even if it was a bit lower quality compared to what we have right now, but there was something about it that your feedback made it into the classroom. So, so that's how sort of the MOOCs were. And I, as I said, it was one of the most amazing experiences I had. And this sort of era continued until like 2012 to 2014, 15. And then the paywall started coming up and uh, sort of like slowly one by one, the things that made MOOCs massive started disappearing. And it's been almost four years until last year that I didn't finish a course because I didn't have the community or the support to help me. So, so we sort of went through this experiment, you know, in a three, three phases. The phase one was internal study groups where we as class central uh, uh, contributors started taking online courses together. So last year in July, four of us got together and took a you know, Excel course from Macau University. Uh, it's on Coursera, it's, it was a free course. And uh, three of us you know, ended up earning a certificate and fourth one eventually got it later on. And you know, it was my first course that I finished in four years. And I loved the experience. All of us loved the experience. And then we went on and you know, we took another course, course uh, uh, which was about the truth about cats and dogs from University of Edinburgh. And then we got to see uh, each other's pets. Uh, the bottom cat is my, my cat named Luke. Uh, and it was, you know, it, like we also got to do a course, but we also got to know each other well. Class Central is completely remote. So, so I think this gave us an insight into each other's lives. And, uh, and because it was part of yeah, Coursera's free certificate offering, uh, we basically, all of us earned a free certificate. And that is one of our motivations to do sometimes to earn a certificate. And this is sort of like, eventually we ended up doing seven courses together. Um, and, you know, we, there were some that we, everybody sort of finished it. There are some that 
very few uh, people like the social psychology, only two, you know, three, you know, four people sort of dropped out, including me. Uh, uh, but, you know, like while, while doing this, we we're also putting out articles about like, hey, this is our experience and all. And, and there were occasional comments of like people wanting to join us. So that sort of became our phase two, where we were like, let's, you know, let's not just do it internally at Class Central. Let's do it with, you know, the whole world and see, you know, see what happens. Uh, so, so this was our plan. Find a course, create a schedule, and discuss the course and you know on those create a separate forum for the course. Uh, and the course we chose was called Mountains 101. It is one of the highly rated courses on Coursera. And uh, it's also part of one of our best online courses of all time. And there wasn't much of a, you know, we wanted a course that could generate discussions, that could generate talks rather than a core technical course where, you know, the questions might be more Q and A style, help me with this help. Like we wanted actual discussions. So that's why we chose something that's science in this field of science. And, and, you know, we got extremely lucky because as soon as we announced, uh, the professor on the right, uh, David Hick, he reached out to us to saying like, hey, how can we be part of this? So we didn't tell him before that we are going to do this. We just announced and, and he, you know, and, and through our conversations, we decided, hey, we can have a weekly Zoom call. At that point, we didn't have the plan to actually do Zoom call. We were thinking about it like maybe every two weeks or something. But with the professor involved, we started doing uh, a weekly Zoom call. And if you, I don't know if you know, uh, this is David Heck. But the person on the bottom left, that's Barbara Oakley. She's the professor behind learning how to learn, has, has 4 million students just on Coursera and courses on multiple platform. And, and you know, it was an amazing experience. Then we had a very special moment uh, when the second instructor, Zach, like while we were doing the study group, Zach was on an expedition in, to Mount Logan in Canada. It was a three week expedition and he basically spent 19 days on, you know, sub zero degrees Celsius and, you know, like, and then as soon as he came back and he just sort of shared with us and he just, you know, we, there wasn't a plan, but he just pulled up his photos and started describing his scientific expedition and sharing it with us. And we also were able to connect it with some of the concepts that we learned in the course. So it was a very sort of special moment and that made you know all of us uh, uh, come together, and for the forums itself, like at this, we use something called Discourse. It's a third-party open-source forum that anybody can host, but we chose to use their official service. You know, you have to pay a small fee. So we did our because this was an experiment, and we wanted to uh, we want to just try it out and see what happens, and. And, you know, like it was a, we formed a like, small cohort of community and, you know, even now the forums are active. Occasionally people will post just uh, two, three days ago, we got a post someone finishing, you know, a month, uh, two months later after our official finish date. So just because of, you know, that sort of community and the discussions, we would occasionally see her progress through the weeks because, she would post on the weekly threads or something. So we know she was making slow like progress. So, um, and I think, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of what the community gave us, like the ability to finish a course. And also it was a you know, very interesting experience. And for the next sort of cohort, we announced three more courses. One was Life of Happiness and Fulfillment, which was our most popular one and two technical courses. And here are some high level stats. Uh, so the technical courses on Excel and Redis usually had very low, relatively low engagement. Uh, Zoom participation was also low, but Aloha, where the professor was involved, uh, had, you know, in the first week we had hundred plus people and then sort of it declined from there. And so that was the two phase we did sort of study groups. 
uh, and we were thinking what to do next. And then we sort of sort of lucked out where we found another sort of person who was teaching something online based on somebody else's curriculum. And I thought like, I, you know, and she used to work at Futurela and I was like, oh, this seems like a great opportunity for us. So I reached out to Jess and, you know, if, you, if you're not familiar with Free Code Camp, Free Code Camp is the open source curriculum that teaches people how to learn to code. And they're very extremely popular. And uh, so, you know, we decided to create a boot camp around the resource. And Jess uh, was the one who would be conducting the live streams. And, you know, basically we use a free code camp curriculum and class center will organize weekly sessions, discussion forums, and all the weekly emails and scheduling of events and everything else. And, you know, because we know this was a big, this would be, we thought this would be popular and it turned out to be popular. Now we have almost 7,000 enrollments. And so we decided to build a portal to manage all this. Before we were doing a lot of things by hand, sending weekly emails and scheduling email uh, events. Uh, one of our, you know, person who was sending email got his account banned because he was sending too many emails. So we decided to create a poor product, we call it the portal, which helps us organize these things. Uh, we also were able to integrate this with our discussion forum. So anybody, like if you see the link here, there's a discussion forum link. And if you click on the link, you get automatically logged in. So, so this portal helped us manage, uh, you know, it made us much easier to manage 7,000 learners. Uh, and this is like the events page of the portal where you can see what the, what the upcoming events are. You can also scroll down and see the recordings. So every live stream is recorded and put online. And this is where the schedule is. So, so everything is in one place. And the only thing you need to go outside for is discussion forums. And, you know, this was also a different experience because because of the size of those people, the number of people, we you know, we couldn't actually do a Zoom call, uh, at least without upgrading to a more expensive Zoom plan. Uh, but what we chose uh, was using, we live streamed it on YouTube and on Twitch. And what was interesting about this sort of, and for our first week, we had Barbara Oakley speak to our learners. So that was a very, very, another special moment, very interesting. And What's interesting about a, like, I have never, like usually I, I don't watch live streams. So this was interesting in that is like, you're watching a, someone speak and you're also able to talk to other learners. Usually you're in a classroom, everybody has to keep quiet and you have to listen to the instructor. But on a live stream, it's interesting that uh, you can talk to other learners. And the another cool aspect of it is, um, you can also bring those comments into the live stream. So somebody is saying something and you know asking a question. Uh, you know they you can just bring that comment, answer it. So, so overall, it's been you know an interesting sort of experience, and it's just been like over a week that we started, and these are Class Central's YouTube stats. Uh, it's. Already, we like already more than three thousand hours of watch time, and it's been maybe ten days since the bootcamp officially started. And we also tend to do two streams, uh, three streams actually a week. One we call it the Eastern stream, stream uh, which is in the Eastern time zone. One is the Western stream, Western time zone, and a guest session uh, every week. The first week was Barbara Oakley, uh, and overall, you know, like we sort of given out over 3000 uh, hours of learning. And it's, it's an interesting marketing channel also because the normal YouTube learners see a notification or something and, or they see the live stream. And so, so this is something we feel we can explore more. And here's sort of what we have learned so far. Um, it's learner acquisition is hard, like finding the people who want to learn at that time can be a challenge. In our early study groups, the most engaged learner uh, were the ones who were already 
part of the course. For example, for Mountains 101, there were people who signed up for Mountains 1. Either they finished it and they just wanted their interaction with the instructor or they, they were not able to finish it first time. So the finding learners came, the, uh, the most engaged learners came from the professor's audience themselves. The second thing is there's a 50% drop off between week two and week one. Uh, 50 to say, you know, 40% drop off. So basically if 120 people showed up on the Zoom in week one, the week two has like around 60 people show up and then it's around stabilizes at that point. The third is it's you know, Zoom calls with a global learning community. Many of them, you know, probably now haven't interacted with people outside their country it can be a bit awkward initially. And in the first sort of uh, first ever Zoom call we did, uh, we tried to introduce each other and, uh, you know, like if people were like, it takes a while to warm up. Then Barbara Oakley recommended maybe, hey, maybe we should start with a presentation or something. So even having an initial presentation 10, 15 minutes early on can help warm up people. And as the, you know, as the weeks pass by, now you're used to people, you see the same people week after week. Um, after the instructor leaves, we also, uh, we also keep, uh, like we spend like 30, 40 minutes afterwards. And sometimes some of the best discussions uh, come you know, from that experience. Those are not recorded or put online, but every generally we record it, our calls and put it you know, for our learners. And the sort of the fourth one uh, is like, this is one of the, I think most interesting thing I found is that people who participate in the forums sometimes, but they do not talk in video calls and the people who talk in video calls do not participate in forums. So it seems to have two sort of distinct audiences for each of them. There's some overlap, but with the most vocal people on the, on the video calls sometimes barely post in the forums. So, you know, so that was one of the interesting things we learned. And, you know, and the, I'm almost done. And from here on, where we are going, we announced a history of science study group this is a YouTube series uh, by Hank Green, uh, who's a popular YouTuber and TikToker. And this time around, we don't have an instructor involved. One of the learners from our previous study group is leading it. So we are trying to uh, experiment with uh, what it would be to do a course without instructors and what we need to create on top of it so that there is you know, what uh, engagement in the forums as well as sessions. So this is an ex interesting experience. Sort of in the long term, as we expand on the portal itself, we hope that we can make it as easy uh, so that anybody sort of can create a study group in the future. Um, it was still a few months or, you know, away. I don't have a timeline, but sort of that's our long-term goal as you, you know, either you find a study group to take with other learners or you create your own and build that social cohort layer, like some sort of synchronous layer on top of asynchronous courses. Yeah, thank you. That's it. Any sort of questions? 